It's certainly more than just another game. It doesn't get any bigger than this. It certainly is like a finals atmosphere. They're on the march back big time. That's our bitter rival. That is massive. It's an electric atmosphere. Haven't seen anything like that. In the crowd on their feet already. Feisty during the game. You know there's a bit more riding on that result. He's got it. Hands up the boat. The captain sees West off. He's in the square. It doesn't need him. The number one team in town if you win the game. And he does his job there. Can he snap it back again? Oh, how about that? First showdown this year here at Adelaide Oval. It's going to be uh, amazing for our fans to watch the two teams go at it. It's slowed off the line. Bang! And that's how big it is. He knows it. It does take a long time to heal that pain. Douglas in the pocket, rolls it towards goal. That is top shelf. Oh, what a champion he is. He's 19 years of age. The Crows are in front. And the game lifts another gear. That's an all-time classic. Montfrey has kicked the goal. Unbelievable. The Adelaide Showdown is always a special event. Round 2 2014 holds special significance, with the city's two sides meeting at a refurbished Adelaide Oval for the first time. It's a game that brings the city to a standstill, and on a perfect day, the fans flocked. The Crows took it up to Geelong in the opening round before being overrun in the final term. They come into the showdown as underdogs, but as is often the case in these clashes, form counts for very little. They dearly love to open their account against Port. Some class return to the Crows lineup with Richard Douglas and Brent Riley coming into the side for their first games of the year. The Power has the third youngest list in the competition, but their inexperience isn't showing, proving they're capable of defeating anyone on their day. Port was too good for Carlton in the opening round, but victory would be far sweeter here with a win over their arch rival. Alapati Carlisle returned to bolster the back line, making way was youngster Tom Cleary. And Ebert is away. He can sight the big sticks from there. Goes to the square, west off, Great. turns Talia around. Again, one-handed. Can't mark it again. Jacob's leather hand. Sure. It's the long bomb. It's the pressure. Harlan couldn't mark it. Knocks it to ground. Through the legs of Robbie Gray. Slips the attempted tackle, back to Hartlett, back to Gray. 45 out, nails it! Go for a talk in front of 53,000. There it is, down the middle. That Jacobs has disappeared, he's gone forward. Whatever from both Johnston and Lobey. The step nice from McKay. They need a nerve settler here, Adelaide. Hands it back to Johnston. They're dead eye from outside 50 for the Crows. First goal at the new Adelaide Oval. Corns, no one to go too long, he knows that, doesn't want to turn it over. There's the one two by hand, Cassisi, West off, now Butcher presents. Well, Back well to West off, runs inside 50, he can keep it low, no one in the square. That's a big time goal. <laughs> Plays on quickly, Schultz over the top to Butcher. It's got Broadbent running for him, he puts it longer into the space, Wingard, Brown, Brown, Wingard with the tap, still Wingard, pass Broadbent, Yench, Wingard dives in, oh he made it his, he just wanted it more, and both goals. Dangerous. Good mark though, in the clinches, he plays on to advantage, and bangs it long, Eddie Betts in a one-on-one, -on -one. big leap, Jonas front spot, Eddie the crumb, dances around a couple, hits the square, bounces it home! <laughs> Three for the quarter. And we're underway. Jacobs and Loby. Jacobs scrambles a kick to half forward. Pozziadli, who's worked hard without a huge possession count. Sloan gets it up. Douglas from the paint. It's bending. It's there. Well, it's funny, Port Adelaide, as much as they've been dominant in last quarters, and uh, we've seen that stat uh, in many places, their third quarters have been uh, just about the worst in the competition. Danger field. He could be the man. He hands it up instead to Smith. Long, goal square. Eddie! For the first time today, the Adelaide Crows lead. And this is a huge moment. To steady the ship across the face. Winger! 
plays on goals. Back to McCabe, and he bounced it past him. Hartlett knocks it out. Cassisi, back to Hartlett. Didn't know it was coming back to him. Has the poise, though. Boat threatening with every passing minute. Back to full forward. Off hands. Brown needed to trap it. Couldn't quite. Hassled out of it. Port Adelaide getting numbers. Wingard. No way. Staggering. Polek off hands. We're down to 14 seconds. Still time. But he needs a target inside 50. Somewhere, somehow, someone. Schultz could be the man. Back tracks. Got it. Reputations are won and lost on days like these. Both these teams know it. There's one quarter left. Broadbent gets back and ends a hand in defence. Nice little flick kick to Corns. And he pumps it. Butcher and Schultz with a big leap. <laughs> Went up hard. Still Butcher. Flicks it out. Hartlett to roll it through. Instant reply. Three-time showdown medalist Mark Rusciuto with us this afternoon. And it's been hard for him to watch. This bloke is unbelievable, Lee, but how hard he works. And he's got a good partner, Ollie Wines! <laughs> Port Adelaide flattened arch-rival Adelaide by 54 points to triumph in the first AFL match at the redeveloped Adelaide Oval. Inspired by midfielders Hamish Hartlett and Brad Ebert, up forward it was Jay Schulz and Chad Wingard who proved unstoppable. Whether we won or not, there's a key ingredient for us and that's effort and you've got to bring that every game and if we, we do that, we give ourselves a chance and, and our effort was there right through the game and there was that little momentum swing after half time where they, they got a little bit of the ball on us and but then I thought some really strong leadership stood up second half of the third quarter and got us going again. A 55 point loss is unacceptable in a showdown and um, especially like I said, when you, when you hit the front in the game and then lose by 54, 55, we've got to ask ourselves some serious questions.